Chapter 19 Mother It has been a year since I arrived here in Varanasi. I have become part of the landscape, sleeping on the ghats and waking up to the noise and commotion of this holy chaos. I am no longer alone. There are hundreds of mendicants like me who call the banks of the Ganga their own. I am also now an accepted part of the Agora community, thanks to Ramdas, with whom I have been tagging along since the day I met him. He goes away often to the mountains, and in those days I hang out in any of the scores of ghats. People come from all over to cleanse their sins here, and in that state of mind they are generous to the ones in Saffron. There are two major ghats dedicated to cremation. The air here has a permanent tinge of burning flesh. People bring their dead to be burned on the raised stone slabs. Everyone is in a rush to send their loved ones on the path to heaven. It is a profitable business for the people who run the cremation, and the demand is high. The poorer people who cannot afford the cremation on the ghats simply cover the dead in a shroud and toss them into the holy river. If the river is purifying the sins of her people, people are not doing anything to purify the river. A sickly silver sheen permanently coats the surface of the water, with an occasional corpse peeping out on the surface. The numerous stray dogs drag the decaying corpses into the small islands in the river. The best-lived lives end up here as half-burnt flesh and food for hungry dogs. This is the reality that the ones who come here seek permanent liberation from. Curiously, no one seems to care. What we experience every day becomes our norm. In fact, just a gart away, the living bathe in droves, oblivious to the death downstream. After all, one dip in the holiest river in the world can wash away the karma of a lifetime. I have become accustomed to watching decomposing flesh and half-burned body parts stick out of burning wood. It used to revolt me. It does not any more. Some of the Agori Babas I hang out with tell me that they have eaten the flesh of decaying corpses as a way to break past the dualities of acceptable and taboo. I have seen them meditate on bodies of the recently dead, hoping to tap into the remaining energy of life before it dissipates into the universe. I hear of other tantric practices that make my toes curl. Ramdas sometimes suggests that I consider becoming initiated. As much as I see the truth in transgressing boundaries and biases to access the God within, I am hesitant to cross over. Crossing over, for me, I feel will be a point of no return. I am scared of being restricted inside a circle I cannot step out of. I hang out with Agoris in the evenings, smoking weed in my chillum. Yes, I have obtained one now, escaping into alternative realities shrouded behind the dense smoke. These evenings are a brotherhood of stories, some religious, some philosophical, some gruesome. Ours is a motley crowd of people who have sought to escape the well-worn path, impatient for a spiritual shortcut with inspired starts and now likely caught in tedious callousness. I have stopped thinking about my journeys, mostly. The endless nights of smoking cannabis and the non-stop unfolding of life and death in front of my eyes have made me numb to my own suffering. I am in the middle of a bubble that I care not to pop. I simply do not care.